Spending holidays in Croatia is an experience that will make your dreams come true. Discover with us the secret of the monumental ancient architecture and uncover the legacy of the Roman Empire. You will fall in love with its historical heritage and fascinating traditions, which you cannot find anywhere else. No matter if you are looking for breathtaking nature with magnificent crystal clear waterfalls, the majestic cathedrals, or the romantic Venetians' old towns full of the traditional narrow streets. This country has it all. Haven't you already decided where to go on your visit to Croatia? Discover with us the best places to see in this beautiful Mediterranean country, which offers endless tourist attractions. Number 1. Pula Pula, the largest city in Istria County, was an important administrative center in ancient Rome. With a history of more than 3,000 years, the city has a long tradition of wine production, fishing, shipbuilding, and tourism. There is something for everyone. The number one tourist attraction here is the almost 2,000-year-old Pula Arena. It is the only remaining Roman amphitheater with preserved four side towers and is among the world's six largest surviving Roman arenas. The maximum height of the outer wall is 29.4 meters and the entire arena could hold 23,000 spectators. Famous gladiatorial fights to the death took place on this site. Nowadays, the arena is used for concerts by favorite artists and has a capacity of approximately 5,000 spectators. In the old town, you will find many relics of the Roman legacy, but don't miss a visit to the more than 2,000-year-old Forum Square. Since the city's founding, this place has been a venue for public events, politics, religion, and commerce. To this day, especially during the summer, many cultural events are held here. There were several temples in the square, but only the Temple of Augustus, from about 14 AD, has been perfectly preserved. Inside, you can find Roman artifacts. Climb to the central hill of Pula, which has been the focal point of settlement development since its earliest history. Today, it is dominated by a massive 17th-century Baroque fortress built by the Venetians, who took over Pula in 1331 and ruled the city until 1797. The castle was always an important defensive point for Venetian control of the Adriatic. Today, the complex houses the Historical and Maritime Museum of Istria. Take a kayak tour, one of the best ways to explore the crystal blue waters of the Adriatic around Pula and South Istria. Discover beaches and caves you would probably never find alone. Whether you are looking for ideal snorkeling spots, want to try cliff jumping, or enjoy the beautiful nature of the Mediterranean coast. Number 2. Korchala Town Dalmatian Korchala Town, with almost 5,700 inhabitants, is the largest and central city of the Croatian island Korchala the second most populous Adriatic island. According to legend, the island was founded by the Trojan hero Aeneas or his friend Antenor. The Venetian Renaissance influenced the gorgeous architecture in the city. The main attraction of Korchala town is the medieval walled old town with its towers, historic buildings, and ancient monuments. You will love walking through the traditional narrow streets typical of Mediterranean towns. You will discover numerous cafes, local restaurants, and charming small galleries here. In the old center, you can even visit the alleged birthplace of Marco Polo here. A local legend is that the famous explorer was born here in 1254. The entrance to the old town is guarded by a massive city gate, a remnant of the defensive walls built in the 13th and 14th centuries. It is an outstanding example of medieval European war architecture making the town one of Croatia's best-preserved medieval fortified towns. In Korchala Bay, near the city walls, there is also the main port, and, especially in the warmer months, you can admire the many moored ships and magnificent yachts here. The old town center is dominated by the splendid St. Mark's Cathedral from the 15th century and built in the Gothic Renaissance style. It is the largest church in the city, and the construction took a century Walk inside to see two beautiful paintings by the famous Venetian artist Tintoretto and a bronze statue by the Croatian sculptor Ivan Maestrovic. The locals keep alive old folk customs, such as the Mreshka gun dance. 
which dates back to the Middle Ages. It was initially danced only on special occasions, but when you visit the old town, you can see this beautiful traditional dance. Nowadays, performances are held twice a week. Kayaking is one of the most popular ways to explore the turquoise waters of the Adriatic Sea around Korchula Island and enjoy the beautiful Croatian countryside. You can stop for swimming and snorkeling and learn some interesting historical stories with a guide. This activity is suitable for everyone, from beginners to advanced. Just seven kilometers from Korchula, there is a tourist center, Lumbarda. This small fisherman's village has a rich history of over 2,000 years ago. Lumbarda is surrounded by sandy vineyards and supplies magnificent scenery for the sunset and the Adriatic Sea. Do not forget to taste great Mediterranean wines here, such as the well-known Croatian white gurk, made from local grapes. For water sports lovers, the area between the Peliashats Peninsula and the old town of Korchula is ideal for windsurfing and kitesurfing. Ride the winds and waves in the heart of the beautiful Dalmatia. Number 3. Havar Town Havar Town is the largest settlement on the Dalmatian island of the same name. It is in an enchanting bay surrounded by high hills with breathtaking views. The city has a long and vital history as a center of commerce and culture on the Adriatic. Part of the Venetian Empire from the 13th to the 18th centuries, the village was a substantial naval base. The massive Spanish fortress of Havar Towers above the city and in the past, it played a significant role in the defense of not only the city and the port, but the entire area. Its construction began in 1278, when Havar was under the rule of the Venetians. The complex forms an impressive stronghold with the 13th century city walls, which were later upgraded. You can reach the top on foot up a steep but scenic climb on cobbled roads, or choose a more accessible route by car. Today, the fortress also houses a small museum with an amphora collection. Time your visit to catch a breathtaking sunset and enjoy a mesmerizing view of Croatia's iconic coastline and historical town. While strolling through the town, do not miss a visit to the harbor, which is also the main harbor of Havar Island. It is one of the most popular destinations in the Croatian islands, both by land tourists and yachters. A wonderful promenade wanders past Mediterranean restaurants, bars, and charming coffee shops. Right next to the harbor is the historic main square of Havar, the largest square in Dalmatia, and one of the largest squares in the whole country. This magnificent Renaissance-style area sprawls over 4,500 square meters, and you can find many beautiful places to try Croatian cuisine. Be sure to try black risotto in local restaurants, featured on almost every Dalmatian menu, this dish is much tastier than it sounds, or looks. Squid ink provides a distinctive coloring and satisfying taste. Squid, mussels, and other meaty seafood ingredients. The main square is also home to some of the island's most stunning buildings, such as the magnificent Cathedral of St. Stephen and its nice 17th century bell tower. The building represents a harmonious synthesis of the Renaissance, manneristic and early Baroque styles. Altars and pulpits from the Gothic period dominate the interior of the three-aisled basilica. Number 4. Zadar Welcome to Zadar, Croatia's oldest continuously inhabited city and the second largest Dalmatian city. The old town on the small peninsula dates from the 9th century BC. Remnants of antiquity and the Venetian Renaissance are visible at every turn in Zadar including Romanesque ruins, medieval churches, cosmopolitan cafes, and fine museums. Under Venetian rule between the 15th and 18th centuries, Zadar became the second most important city in the empire, after Venice. The town had a sophisticated defensive system as the answer to the rise of Ottoman Turkey. And as part of the city walls, you can still see the gorgeous Landward Gate with the Lion of St. Mark, a symbol of the Venetians. Do not forget to visit the famous Zadar Sea Organ, an experimental musical instrument and architectural object playing to the rhythm of the sea. Its trumpets are placed under giant marble steps and descend to the water. Close to them, you can feel how they sound in different tones as the waves rise and fall on the seafront. Next to the Sea Organ is another famous Zadar landmark, 
the Monument to the Sun, also called the Greeting to the Sun. Completed in 2008, it comprises a 22-meter diameter circle with photovoltaic solar modules underneath. Get here in time to catch the scene of the sun over Zadar, which Alfred Hitchcock, the famous English filmmaker, described as one of the most beautiful ever. Don't miss a visit to the Forum Romanum when discovering the legacy of the ancient Roman rise. Due to its undisturbed layout, it is the most faithful image of the ancient city. It is the largest forum in Croatia, 95 meters by 45 meters, commissioned by the first Roman emperor, Augustus, in the first century AD. The square was the center of public life, the largest on the east coast of the Adriatic Sea. The Cathedral of St. Anastasia from the 12th to the 13th century, the largest church in the entire Dalmatia, the coastal area of Croatia, is also in contact with the historic settlement. However, the church's origins date back to the Christian basilica built in the 4th and 5th centuries AD, making it one of the oldest cathedrals in Croatia. You can climb 180 steps to reach the top of the 56-meter freestanding bell tower for exceptional panoramic views over the city, the old town, and the neighboring islands. It is worth it. On the northeastern part of the Forum Romanum, built on the square from which the material was also used, you can discover the Church of the Saint Donatus from the 9th century. At 27 meters in height, it is the largest pre-Romanesque building in the country. The circular shape characterized by simplicity and technical primitivism is typical of the early medieval age in Dalmatia. Just opposite the Church of Saint Donatus stands Saint Mary Church, with a large monastery founded in 1066. And if you're a real history buff, head to the Archaeological Museum next to the complex. Founded in 1832, it is the second oldest museum in Croatia. Here you will find precious artifacts from the development of Zadar, from prehistoric times through the extensive Roman settlement, to the early Middle Ages. Number 5. Plitvica Lakes Plitvica Lakes is the oldest and largest national park in the country. On the 8th of April, 1949, it was proclaimed Croatia's first national park. Today, the national park covers an area of just under 300 kilometers squared. The most beautiful part, 16 named and several smaller unnamed lakes, cascading one into the next, covered just under 1% of the total area. When visiting this unique park, you can choose seven diverse routes. The shortest is three hours. The longest takes up to eight hours. The lake system was divided into upper and lower lakes. The 12 gorgeous water bodies form the upper part, and Koziak Lake is the last and lowest. With 82 hectares, it is also the most extensive and deepest lake in the national park ever. This vast lake is a bridge between the upper and lower part, and using two of three stations. You can take a 20-minute ferry ride or choose to walk. Both options are genuinely lovely. The ferries are low noise, ecologically friendly, and electric, so you can enjoy a leisurely ride and admire the panoramic view of breathtaking nature. The Lower Lakes area consists of four magnificent lakes divided by limestone barriers. You can also find the highest waterfall, considered the most beautiful one in the park, the Great Waterfall. At 78 meters high, it is situated at the very end of the Lower Lakes and is also the highest waterfall in the country. About 100 caves have been explored in the territory of the National Park. The longest is 165 meters long, while the bottomless pit is 203 meters deep. You can even visit some of them. While exploring the natural beauties, you will come across some of the 259 species of animals discovered so far. The Plitvica Lakes National Park's animal world is diverse and rich thanks to the diversity and preservation of the habitats. This gorgeous park is open to visitors year-round so that you can admire this breathtaking natural scenery even in the winter. However, the upper lake area remains closed in the specific period, which starts in the first week of November and ends in the first half of March. Number 6. Rovin This beautiful Istrian city is considered one of the most romantic places on the Croatian coast. 
It began its history on a small island called Mons Albanos. The limited space created a unique atmosphere of romantic streets that line narrow, colorful houses and complement them with picturesque squares. Do not miss visiting magnificent Grecia Street. Rovin's main street has ateliers, small art galleries, and souvenir shops. If you happen to be in the city in August, you can enjoy the fantastic open-air exhibition here. In the heart of the old town on the hill, you can visit the Baroque Church of St. Ephemia, built from 1725 to 1736. The relics of St. Ephemia are preserved in a Roman sarcophagus from the 6th century. Venetian architecture's influence is undeniable. You can clearly see how the bell tower resembles the Tower of St. Mark's Basilica in Venice. On top of this 60-meter high tower in Rovin stands the statue of St. Ephemia. Admire the majestic interior of the three-nave church and discover many unique and stunning art pieces from the 15th or 18th century. About 15 kilometers north of Rovin, there is one of the most beautiful natural sceneries of the Istrian Peninsula, the 10-kilometer-long Lim Fjord. However, it is not a fjord, but a ria because the river carved it. It is part of the 35-kilometer-long Lim Valley, and its widest part is about 600 meters wide. Very steep mountains rise on both sides, in some parts up to 100 meters high. From the harbor of Rovin, you can even book and take a popular half-day boat tour to the Lim area. Especially during summer, in the harbor, you can find another must-see attraction, the Batana Boat Ride. During a romantic voyage, you will experience a breathtaking sunset view with historic old towns in the background. Batana Boat is strongly associated with Robin's long fishing tradition. From the 17th to the 19th century, the town was Istria's most important maritime, fishing, and shipbuilding center. This fact contributed to developing a remarkable and rich tradition, which Rovin cultivates to this day. However, fishing is no longer the area's primary industry of the economy. Number 7. Rijeka Suppose you are looking for a rich and diverse surrounding area that allows you to escape in tradition with amazing history, pristine flavors, romance, or adrenaline sports. In that case, you have already chosen Rijeka, the third largest city in Croatia and the country's principal seaport. Do you like large event parades full of fun and extraordinary shows? Between late January and early March, one of Europe's most acknowledged and largest carnivals takes place in the city. Rijeka Carnival was established in 1982, and each year it attracts around 150,000 spectators and 10,000 masked participants. Every June since 1999, the Fumanka Sailing Regatta is held, and the city's harbor turns into a port full of boats and yachts. With the traditional slogan, Got a boat? Got a sail? Sign up! This is an open, free sailing regatta, and anyone interested can participate. In 2019, you can spectate more than 200 sailing boats at the event. For those who like to participate in running events, the traditional Rijeka Half Marathon is held in April. Join thousands of sportsmen, sportswomen, sports amateurs, and fans. Only four kilometers from the city center, you can visit the Hill Fortress Castle of Tursat from the 13th century. The beginnings of fortification go back to the period of ancient Rome. This historical monument is a recreation area and a pilgrimage site at the same time. The place provides terrific views of the city and the valley of the river flowing into the Adriatic Sea. Do you want to get the best local products? Then visit Rijeka Market with more than 100 years magnificent old building. Here you can buy fresh meat and fish, seasonal fruits and vegetables, local oils, delicious cheeses and honey, and even homegrown flowers. Visit the only Baroque rotunda of monumental proportions built on Croatian land, Rijeka St. Vitus Cathedral. The church as we see it today was founded in 1638. The interior contains luxurious Baroque works, an altar with many miraculous relics, and a beautiful pulpit. Number 8. Dubrovnik the French troops, the Venetians, and the Austrian Empire, who occupied or controlled this pearl of the Adriatic, founded in the 7th century, left their mark on the city. 
Dubrovnik is most famous for its 13th century walls, which run two kilometers around the city and up to 25 meters high at some points. The main barrier is four and six meters thick on the land side. Another popular place to visit is the Assumption Cathedral. The first basilica was built here in the seventh century. You can find a gorgeous triptych of Ascension of Mary from the 16th century by Titian, a world-famous Renaissance painter. Do not miss the 11th century St. Lawrence Fortress, which was important during the Renaissance against Venetians. At 37 meters above sea level, you can enjoy a breathtaking view of the Azure Adriatic Sea and the medieval town. At one time, 10 cannons were menacing potential invaders. Under St. Lawrence Fortress, the small bay is where you can rent a sea kayak. Take an unforgettable guided tour, paddling around the medieval walls to see the city differently. This attraction usually lasts two to three hours and can be enriched with snorkeling, snacks, or a fantastic sunset view. Would you like to enjoy sunbathing? Discover the most stunning beach, Banya, only a 10-minute walk from the center. You can also find a trendy chill-out beach club with a bar and restaurant there. The place is well known among visitors to Dubrovnik, so it can be very crowded in the summer. The old town is divided by a wide street, Straden, the 300 meters long made promenade. At one end, you can admire the large Onofrio Fountain, built in 1438. One of the city's most famous landmarks has 16 stone carved masks, with their mouths dribbling drinkable water into a drainage pool. Its sibling, the ornate small Onofrio Fountain, is located at the other end of Stratum. Discover local restaurants here, they are exquisite. Taste traditional Croatian cuisine, always combined with fresh fish and seafood. Mediterranean food is also very healthy. Aren't you afraid of heights? Take the cable car and enjoy the city's best views and the surrounding area from the 412 meter high hill. On a clear day, you can see up to 60 kilometers. Dubrovnik has become incredibly popular during the last years, thanks to the TV series Game of Thrones, in which it was named King's Landing. Number nine, Split. The city was founded as a Greek colony more than 2,200 years ago. In the fourth century AD, the area became the home of the heavily fortified palace, which today forms about half the old town and is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the country. Here, the Roman emperor Diocletian spent the last years of his retirement. Later, the city became the ancient capital of the Roman province of Dalmatia, and today it is the largest city on the Croatian coast. The must-see place is the ancient Diocletian's palace, completed in the early 4th century AD. Although this massive 30,000 square meter structure resembles a large fortress, about half of the complex was used for the emperor's personal use, and the rest housed the military garrison. Around 3,000 people now live on the grounds of the original palace. The ancient palace originally had four main Roman entrances, the golden, silver, iron, and bronze gates. Be sure not to miss visiting the golden one, the main and most beautifully decorated gate. It is on the way to Salona, the former capital of the Roman province. Right next to the gate is another famous landmark of the city, the 8.5 meter tall statue of the Gregory of Nin. This medieval bishop is considered a national hero. Do not forget to tap your toes on his big bronze foot. They say it brings good luck and will help make your wish come true. In the heart of the old town, you can admire the Cathedral of St. Dominius, originally the Mausoleum of Diocletian, built in AD 305. It is the second oldest structure used by any Christian cathedral. It was consecrated at the turn of the 7th century AD and is regarded as the oldest Catholic cathedral in the world that remains in use in its original form. Are you looking for one of the best views of Split? Then it would be best if you visited the medieval Fortress Kliss. It is located only 13 kilometers from the city, and its history lasts 2,000 years. The complex has a significant defense source in Dalmatia, especially against the Ottoman advance. There is also a museum where you can see a variety of weapons, armor, and traditional uniforms. Beach lovers definitely have something to choose from around Split, such as the pebbled Kasuni Beach, only four kilometers away from the city center. It is one of the most beautiful beaches in the region. 
Near Split, visit Roman Emperor Diocletian's birthplace, the ancient Salona city. Founded in the 3rd century BC as the capital of the Roman province of Damatia, the town grew to over 60,000 inhabitants. This vast area is also the most extensive archaeological park in the country. If you want to discover more about this area's remarkable history, visit the country's oldest museum. This archaeological museum was established in 1820 and is only one kilometer from the city center. More than 150,000 unique artifacts cover the period from prehistoric times to the epoch of famous Croatian rulers. Do not miss visiting Riva, Split's most popular and important public place. This charming promenade is also the stage of city life and the ideal place for having your morning or afternoon coffee or an evening out with friends over drinks. Number 10. Zagreb The region with this capital and largest city of Croatia has a rich history dating from Roman times. With more than 1 million inhabitants, Zagreb metropolitan area is known for its diverse economy, high quality of living, museums, and sporting and entertainment events. The capital was once two towns, Gradic and the smaller Keptol. By visiting the larger Gradic, you will immerse yourself in the medieval history of Zagreb. The funicular public transport even leads to the raised hill, one of the world's shortest, with a track length of 66 meters. From 6.30 a.m. to 10 p.m., the rides are every 10 minutes and take only 64 seconds. Nearby, you can admire 13th century St. Mark's Church, one of the oldest architectural monuments in the city. On the roof, tiles are laid to represent the coat of arms of Zagreb. The church was radically reconstructed in the second half of the 14th century. Combine visiting St. Mark's Church with a historical performance in the square. A traditional change of the Guard of Honor by the Cravat Regiment is organized from April to October, a couple of times a month. The second original medieval town, the Eastern Keptol, was inhabited mainly by clergy and today houses a majestic neo-Gothic cathedral dedicated to the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Kings St. Stephen and St. Ladislas. With a height of 108 meters, this is the second tallest building in Croatia and the most monumental sacral building in Gothic style southeast of the Alps. The cathedral holds a spectacular treasury with one of the country's wealthiest exhibit collections. Some of them are older than 900 years. A five-minute walk from the cathedral is Ban Jelicic Square, the city's central square. The square's history begins in 1641 and later made part of the downtown pedestrian zone. There are many medieval streets in the surroundings, an ideal place to buy souvenirs or lisitar hearts a traditional symbol of the country. Are you looking for the best view in the area? Visit the mid-13th century fortress Medvedgrad, only 10 kilometers from the center. Enjoy the unique panoramic view of the city from an elevation of over 500 meters. The defensive complex was built after Mongols invaded Zagreb in 1242 when the medieval city was destroyed and burned. If you enjoy walking through beautiful city parks, visit English-style Maximer Park opened in 1794. It was the first large public park in southeastern Europe. It forms part of the city's cultural heritage and is a habitat for many plant and animal species. The park also houses the city zoo with more than 275 animal species. For art lovers, Zagreb definitely has a lot to offer. Start with a visit to the Art Pavilion, established in 1898. It is the oldest gallery in southeast Europe and the only purpose-built gallery in the city. The gallery has a total display area of 600 meters squared and has organized more than 700 exhibitions throughout its history. The Museum of Arts and Crafts is just a 12-minute walk from the Art Pavilion. The Grand Historicist Palace from the 19th century is one of the first purpose-built edifices devised to merge the museum and school functions. On more than 2,000 meters square of museum space, you can find about 160,000 unique objects from the 4th to 20th centuries. Right next to the complex is another interesting, if somewhat controversial, art museum, the Mimara Museum. Mr. Mimara, the original art collector, built his 3,700 artifacts collection by forging, looting, and swindling. According to some estimates, it is the greatest collection of fakes in the world.
If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more in the future, leave a comment, give a like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.